ביל חתמה. ביל חתמה. או ביל חתמה. ביל חתמה, now live on סאוט אל רנד. When you type his name in search engines, this is what you get. Superintendent Peter Lennon is not just asking for a fair go for Fairfield, but is making it happen. Superintendent Peter Lennon is responsible for reducing crime rates and making Fairfield a model for other suburbs. Superintendent Peter Lennon is urging calmness and continued positive communication. And my favorite, Fairfield's top cop and a leading figure in the Islamic community. He is my guest today, Superintendent Peter Lennon from Fairfield Local Area Command. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Lara. How are you? I'm very good. Peter, you're urging the community for calmness. Uh, yes, we're um, following what happened tragically last Monday and uh, Tuesday morning. The commissioner, our premier... And all police commanders and myself out here in the Fairfield area, we're just asking people we just need to be calm and united in peace, um, in just understanding what took place. And we've just got to have a look at, at our friends and our workmates, our families, and just be calm about what happened. And, and we're seeing it. And uh, I put that message out last Tuesday morning, but you can just see it in our society and the beautifully, beautiful floral tributes in Martin Place that... Everyone is being calm and everyone's talking about it. And this was a, a criminal act. It had nothing to do with culture or religion. It was, it, it was a, a very, very unfortunate criminal act. And that's the way we all must be, must be looking at it. And it's, it's a signal to us all to work stronger together. Mm-hmm. But there is fear in the community. I mean, it's, it's good to ask them to be calm, but how do they do that? There's a, we are sensing a big level of fear in the community. Yeah, look, I know that there's a level of fear, but um, we, we've, we've got to look at the positive side of, of, of everything in this. Um, mm-hmm. And we've, we've just got to be wor- working together to, main that, to maintain that calmness and that harmony. The, one of the ways of getting rid of the fear is to talk to your friends, to talk to your family about and any issues that you've got. You can come and talk to the police as well, and I've said this before. Mm-hmm. We, the, the police are part of the community. We, we feel what's going on. We... We, we, we are you. We're part of the community. So please come and talk to the police. Um, either now or later on through this interview, I've got the phone numbers for Fairfield, Flemington Police, Bankstown Police. I can give you as many numbers as people would like. Mm-hmm. We're all on Facebook. So one of the ways to release that fear is to talk about the issues that, you're, that are on your mind. And you can, you can look up Fairfield Lack on Facebook. You just type mm-hmm. in Fairfield, leave a space and type in Lack, mm-hmm. L-A-C. You do that for each of, each of the commands, yeah. and you can write confidentially to them. You can ring us on phone numbers. You can ring Crime Stoppers, but don't let things get you down. One of the aspects of fear is that people think they've got nowhere to turn to. Well, you can talk to your religious leaders. Mm-hmm. You can talk to your community leaders, or you can come and talk to the police, and we're more than willing to talk to people because we, we are part of the community. Many stories will unfold through the coronial process, and thus we will not comment on how the operation was conducted, but we cannot but tell of the pride that we all have in the New South Wales police officers that were there as frontline negotiators, fighters, and courageous death yeah. faces, if I may say. Do you share Australians this pride? I'm very, very <laughs> proud. Very, very proud. Um, one side of the coin is this is a terrible thing to happen. Mm. The other side is that I feel so proud of all the emergency services and I've got to say yes the police did a job that they're trained for um, you know it's it's not a good job mm-hmm. in in that aspect but there are a lot of other services there as well the fire and rescue the ambulance service a lot of victim services from New South Wales government I was in there on Tuesday afternoon and took some some guests in to lay flowers and within a minute you you could not help but have a tear in your eye for the the sorrow and That everyone was expressing in there but there's so many people in there helping to to get our community over this and work together to be stronger peter while we face one incident you deal with numerous last week was a very challenging one for the police force commencing yeah. with the horrifying lind cafe siege on monday and concluding with a horrific cans massacre that took the lives of eight children on friday how do police officers cope with such tragedies yeah it's Um, very very tough um, we talk a lot amongst ourselves as to how we feel mm. it, it releases a lot of our tensions and our fears and you can you can talk to someone that you work with 
and I'm sure you can relate the same thing within your business. You know, someone within the, the radio station you can talk to mm. better than someone outside. They wouldn't understand what you're talking about. So we talk a lot, but we've also got chaplains. Yeah. We've got um, a Muslim chaplain who comes through here. We've got um, a Lebanese chaplain who comes to visit. Who's your uh, Lebanese chaplain? Beg your pardon? Who, who is your Lebanese chaplain? His name is George Habib. George Habib, yeah. Yeah, H-A-B-I-B. Yeah. Um, uh, Reverend George comes in. Mm. He comes here every Wednesday. Mm. He's a really good man. Yes. <laughs> um, he's left a library of books here for us to have a bit of a read, and we've got a quiet room if any of the police want to sit down and just have a bit of a read about things. Mm. Um, George doesn't spruik religion to us. Mm-hmm. He talks compassion and understanding um, our, our, our personal emotions. So, poli- look, police talk a lot to themselves. The chaplains are there. Mm. There is a dedicated um, psychological service that's available for, for police to talk to if they want. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, there's their own um, sergeants, duty officers, and myself as well. I often have a bit of a chat to some of the police, and because because your own between your own personal problems and then what you also see at work, yeah. there's a lot to carry on your shoulders. And we um, you know, we see a lot of, of sad things in traffic accidents and people injured mm-hmm. in car accidents or railway accidents, all sorts of things. So, and then one of the biggest problems is our domestic violence, which is we still haven't got that under control, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mainly men are um, assaulting and emotionally abusing our, our women. And then there's children stuck in the middle of all that as well. The poor mm-hmm. old kids have to witness a man yelling at their mother. It's just yeah. unbelievable. New South Wales Police Commissioner Andrew Scipioni on Saturday was on 2GB with Ray Hadley. Yeah. He told a very touching story about the police family. Did you hear the interview? I didn't hear the interview. You I've didn't. heard. I've, mm. I've only heard a couple of snippets of, mm. of, of mm. that. Mm. He told a story of one of the police officers who needs a kidney transplant, and the donor was actually not a family member, but a colleague, a member of the police family. Yeah. How, how do you live the experience of the police force as a family? Um, okay. Well, as, as, as we've all got brothers and sisters, blood brothers and sisters, we, we also consider ourselves to be family members because we, well, we spend so much time together, mm. but we also go out and and we risk our lives for each other. Um, you know, we will go into a domestic argument into a house where we don't know what we're going to face, but we will do it together. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we take care of each other in that way, in, in, in protecting each other, but then we also protect each other from a welfare point of view as well. So when you look at what a family structure is with mum and dad, brothers and sisters all helping each other and protecting each other and giving advice as to how things how things go in the world, well, so it is with the with the police and it's grown into having that term of, of being a family you know i suppose it's even um yeah it just extends very strongly because you, you don't want to go home and well i i see some things and i must say it, <laughs> but i don't go home and talk to my wife about what i see and what i do very much mm. but i talk a lot to my colleagues about it yeah and then you yeah you share your experiences so in that way they're they're family we, we help each other out a lot. Superintendent, you are heard by at least 100,000 Arabic-speaking Australian today. What message would you relay to them? Well, look, first thing and foremost, I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year mm. for, for the times ahead. Yes, we've had a tough time, but look, the, the police are here. Um, we're so proud of the way that everyone has, has handled this. There's been so many people of different cultures and religions visiting Martin Place, which has been absolutely fantastic and has been very, very calming. Um, everyone has been just so responsible in relation to the way that they're, they're dealing with this and seeing it as a criminal act. And if people have got fears, please, the Fairfield phone number is 97288 mm-hmm. We've got a confidential phone number, which is 97288 You can ring Bankstown Police, they're 97832199. You can ring Flemington Police. They're 96468699. And all you need to say is, I've got something confidential to tell you. Mm-hmm. The police officers will take the information and they will treat your confidentiality with utmost, utmost respect because mm-hmm. we need to be connected in, in our community. And that's something that I drive out here, you know, that the, the police are part of the community and the community represent our police. We... 
We need to do a lot more with our communities. And, and we're, I'm, I'll also use the time, if I can, Lara, just to yeah. ask if anyone wants to volunteer to work with the police. Um, we're very, very welcome to, to work with a community mm-hmm. in a volunteer fashion as well, where, where you can represent us in a voluntary manner. Mm-hmm. And how could they do that? Just they can contact their police. I've given you yep, those same numbers yep. there. Um, they, they can they can just go ring their police station and say, I've got a little bit of free time, I'd like to be a volunteer. Interesting. Um, we've got 15 volunteers at Fairfield. So well, what, what do volunteers do? Okay, volunteers will either help out in the police station, they might do some admin work, mm. um, they might do some filing work, if that's, what, if that's a skill that they like to do. We have others that speak in their home in their home tongue mm-hmm. to our victims to make sure that things are okay with particular pieces of follow-up they will come along to gr- to community groups mm-hmm. and speak in their home tongue to to community groups um, we use a lot of arabic and assyrian yeah. vietnamese interpreters out here as, as volunteers and they come along and help us and they're the they are a con- connection to the community mm-hmm. uh, and they volunteer their time interesting so very very happy to have volunteers because that's it's, that's the representation of the community that can work with us, and we use those volunteers to 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 tell us what the problems are. If people don't want to come forward, well, our volunteers is just another avenue of getting the information because they're part of the community. Mm-hmm. So, and they get a uniform as well. Wow! <laughs> but it's not a full police. I'll, I'll, I'll put my hand up for that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a volunteer uniform. <laughs> Okay, so listeners, if you are interested, contact your local police station. Fairfield is 9728-8399. You could um, check the Facebook accounts or pages, yes. Suburb Space LAC, so Fairfield right. Space LAC. Um, Peter, your, your, your work is in Fairfield Local Area Command. Many of, of the residents that you serve in this area are loyal listeners to this station. Do you want to send them an audio greeting via radio tomorrow? An audio greeting? Well, mm-hmm. please have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Say hello to your local police when they're walking by or driving by. Give them a wave, <laughs> shake their hand, give them a hug because we're just part of the community and we're, we're here to work for you. Absolutely. Superintendent Peter Lennon, thank you so much for your time today, and I wish you and your loved ones a very blessed and Merry Christmas. Thank you, Laura. Take care. Thank you very much.